Well, this is a back to the past, uh, nostalgia, <laughs> revisiting my youth kind of video. I uh, thought I would take a break from the embedded systems and uh, modern oscilloscopes and so on and take a look at some equipment that uh, I've owned for quite some time. This is a piece of Sencor test equipment for uh, it's called a VG91. It's a video generator that uh, generates uh, NTSC, that stands for National Technical Standards Committee. It's the old analog TV standard. Uh, so what's it, what's it doing all apart here? Well, when I uh, went to turn it on, I noticed that the, uh, I haven't used it in uh, years. Uh, it would, wouldn't come on. So I checked the fuse and the fuse was blown. So I thought, well, I'll try one one more fuse and see what happens. So I put uh, one fuse in, proper size, and turned the unit on. There were some sparks, uh, a little bit of a burning smell, and about a second later, uh, the new fuse blew. So I knew I had a, a problem. I started taking the uh, the unit apart. I found the problem. I'll show it to you in a second, and I'm about to repair it. The uh, so why am I why am I going back to this kind of stuff? Well, I thought I would take a break and uh, do something that is reminiscent of how I first got started in electronics. My first real electronics job was when I was in high school. I got a job in a radio TV repair shop and uh, the equipment that we used back then was quite different. Maybe we'll talk about that at some point in the future. I've done some videos on some of that equipment uh, some time ago. But uh, this was sort of the most modern of the analog TV equipment. This uh, unit, the Sencor VG91, when paired with the TVA92, which I also have, uh, pretty much represented the the top of the line for TV service shops of, say, the 1980s. And the uh, so so okay, what went wrong with this uh, with this unit? Here you see the power supply turned over and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. You will see the, where the burn is. Notice that big hole where the, the uh, fiberglass has been completely burned through. Uh, now earlier there were, there were a few strands of fiberglass across there, but the, uh, I do not know what caused this. What this, uh, what this was is the place where the power switch connects to this board and all the power switch does is it connects the AC line which is on this connector to the primary of the power transformer which is on this connector and it does it through this the power switch which used to be a connector uh, at this point maybe I can still find that connector and show you how badly burned it was but the connector was so badly burned uh, on the back side that when I tried to unplug the connector it just it just came out of the board entirely and and then as I started trying to clean this up I realized that it was just uh, the board was completely destroyed once again I do not know what happened here but but what I'm going to do is rewire this unit uh, just without going through this board, in part just to avoid this whole area of this board. Now this is the power supply board, and I'm going to check and maybe replace all of these. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I'll replace all of these or not, but I will check them to see whether the electrolytics are good or not. This is not a unit that I uh, use very much, but uh, I was actually rearranging my workshop where I had this unit and moving it to another location. 
<laughs> and I just happened to try turning it on and realized that I uh, got some problems. So uh, anyway, uh, after I get this thing rewired, I may uh, add a little to this video or do a follow-up video on how the, you use this unit. Uh, for those of you that, uh, that are interested in vintage television, these are useful instruments, but for, the, for, for most of the rest of you, this is just an, uh, a waste of money, uh, uh, a boat anchor, if you will. So anyway, I don't know at this point whether I'm going to uh, do a uh, follow-up video or I'm just going to make this one a little longer, so stay tuned. Okay, it's all back together again, uh, slightly modified <laughs> to eliminate that spot on the board. So let me turn off this light and power it on. And as you see, it comes up and it uh, generates an NTSC signal with color bars and other uh, accoutrements. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is go ahead and put the covers back on and move it to its new uh, location. And uh, so I'll uh, give you a look at where it is when I've uh, got it situated. And then uh, maybe we'll decide then whether to continue this video with some examples or put that off to another day. And here the two units are in their, at least for now, uh, final location. The, uh, this is the VG91 that we just repaired. And next to it is the TVA92, which is... Uh, basically what these units are. This generates the video signal including all of the color information and different channels and subcarriers and test signals and so on for for the uh, tuner, the IF, uh, the uh, sound and so on. And then this was a unit that was called a uh, video analyzer and basically what it did is it helped you service the vertical and horizontal sweep sections and the sync sections of the uh, of TV receivers. So uh, I hope you'll pardon the shaky handheld camera on this one but uh, I didn't uh, I didn't want to take too much longer and I'm running out of time today my favorite college baseball team is going to be playing in about four minutes. So I think I'm going to wrap up this video. Uh, we'll come back to this set at some point and uh, hook up a TV to it and uh, and go back to, uh, to the way things were in the 60s. Although actually these didn't come out until I think the late 70s or early 80s. But, uh, but nonetheless, uh, back to the way it never was. So once again, I hope you'll have a nice day. Please stay safe and look forward to some more videos on this and some other subjects in the future.